So welcome everybody to Tuesday night. Uh, this is Lemar Weber and I'm going to be doing a free art journaling class today. And look, I have Vaseline from last week's um, project. Not sure why the Vaseline's there. Apologize in advance for my overgrown nails. I promise you I will get them done for you tomorrow. I know how much you guys talk about my lovely nails all the time. So you can forgive me for one week. It's just been a busy week. <laughs> my gels have overgrown, ladies. All right, and gentlemen, um, I love, let's talk a little bit about this journal. No, I don't carry this journal in the store, but um, you know what? This is probably one of my favorite um, journals to carry around. It is fairly light. The pages are not um, very thick, um, so they don't take to wet medium really great unless you're going to coat them with gesso. Um, usually I do a couple layers of gesso just to get them nice and um, thick or the other thing that I like to do as well is sometimes to get them a little bit thicker I like to go ahead and even glue two pages together but I just there's something about this moleskin journal that I just love so um, I know you were going to ask me so I thought I'd talk about it and uh, so that's that's what I have to say about it not much all right um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do um, several art journal pages. We're going to um, work with several different mediums. Um, so for sure with gessos, and we talked last week a little bit about gessos. Um, but before I get started, um, well, let's talk about our mediums. I may pull out my Isinks, um, which you guys have played with before. But I really actually um, wanted to play a little bit with my uh, alcohol inks. So we'll talk a little bit about alcohol inks and also... Um, my fave, um, some of the um, acrylic inks, the fluid acrylic inks, like so the Liquitex acrylic inks, these guys, right? So this one's completely covered, um, but they're really fun. Um, so we'll use those and maybe a couple of other things. Um, and then of course some art mediums and, yeah, let's, and stamps. So let's get started. Make it really simple tonight, um, but really fun. So I am actually going to, because this is a new one, I'm going to do the first page um, on another day. But let's go ahead maybe and glue a couple pages together to make it a little bit thicker. I think that will work for me. So what I like to do, what I like to use for that in particular, I just use my gel medium, uh, my matte medium. So I'm just grabbing it from here. I have some right here. Okay. And if you have any questions and I just can't get to it for some reason, um, we do have Yvonne here. Um, I know Tanya um, will pop by, I believe, as well. So please be sure to ask those ladies um, if you have any questions whatsoever because they will answer them for you. Okay. And so I just apply a little bit of, you can use the more the gel. This is just matte medium. It's not gel, actually. I know I said gel before, but I lied. Okay, I just lied. And this is just the Liquitex brand. Um, I like to use matte because I don't, in case anything seeps to the other pages, I don't want to see any shininess. So, oops, and let's make sure that it's actually half straight. And how do I do that? I just actually close the book. And that makes a big difference because then I can just really get in there. Okay. There we go. And see, now it's nice and perfect. If you have any little bits and pieces just poking out, just add a little bit more. You should be fine once it's dry. Okay, and let's do the same thing to the other side of this one, and then I know it's nice and thick. And I was thinking of showing you the new marbling kit um, that we have in the store because so many people asked about it. So what do you guys think? Should we use it up today? I think that would be fun. I think you guys will like it. So I think we're going to do that. So again, sorry, I forgot to show you. This is matte medium. Okay. Love it. And so that is what we're going to use. So actually, while we let this page dry a little bit, why don't we go ahead and use that marbling kit, okay? So we'll let that dry for a minute, and I'm going to pull my marbling kit, and this is what it looks like. It looks just like this, okay? 
and um, you can create some pretty amazing stuff. And I don't know if some of you saw my previews on Facebook, but you can create some pretty amazing backgrounds for your art journal pages. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do that. But let me show you. These are just some of the backgrounds that um, I got to create with this kit. Look at these. Aren't they awesome? And this is just with regular cardstock. Aren't those amazing? I love, I love the muddiness of this one. I don't know what it is. Check that one out. So cool, right? So you can see how fun this is. And these are envelopes. How fun, look at this. How fun is that? Okay, so we, Ava and I had way too much fun. Look at that. That looks like wood grain. Um, <coughs> these marbling kits are fabulous. This is not regular ink. It's not like you can use any ink on this. Trust me, I tried because I wanted to see um, if I could just use anything. Apparently you can't. So um, don't try to use any other ink, alcohol ink or whatever. It sinks right to the bottom, just so you know, in case you're wondering. So I'm just going to grab the water. So you need a tub of water. So give me a second here before I spill it everywhere again for the second time because I have a laptop and a, um, what do you call it, iPad, so I just don't want to get it all over the place, so I'm just going to open it up this way so that you guys can see it a little bit better. And so the kit, can everybody see, I think it's pretty good, right? I can lift it up just a tiny bit, the camera, so that you guys can see it even better. And I'll move the camera, just give me a moment. There we go. You get a little bit of a better view of the whole thing. And then we'll move it down in a little bit. So there's little pieces of paper in there, which is totally fine. Now what you want to do with this marbling kit, you can use any paper you want. Of course, some papers work better than others. So we can test that out together. This is part of the fun. But what I found is this kit comes with what's called this float paper. And um, the little pieces, once they're dry, they're dry and they're kind of waxy. So you can use them over and over and over again, which is what it says here. You don't need to um, worry about them. So there's several ways of doing this. So you can apply them down onto your paper, just like so, or your water, just like so. And they'll float around. doesn't matter. And so let's start with the green, just because. And one other thing is, is as soon as you touch the water, there's oil in your fingers that it'll repel. You'll, you'll see. Okay. So, and apply this onto the paper and some of the color sinks to the bottom, but some of it, um, gets bigger. So it just depends. Okay. Let's do the yellow. And we'll do, let's see, orange. And I can even apply it right onto the next same color. And it'll just blend together. Or I can add it here. Okay, doesn't matter. Some of it will sink to the bottom. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. I'm going to grab another one to make get the red. Probably don't need to apply as much as I did either. I didn't have as much bleeding going to the bottom as I do today. So we'll look at that one. See how cool that is? Okay. And then should we do one more for the blue? It's not distilled water. It's just water. Literally just water. That's all it is. And what's cool about it is I don't have to worry about the cools and warms mixing and um, creating brown. And then what I do is I like to go ahead and kind of move it around and create some fun little marbling effects. Whoops, totally dipped that one. That's okay. Lots of my ink sink, sunk to the bottom today, which is fine. It's just part of the practice. Okay, so really fun. I know it doesn't look like much, but then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a piece of paper which I've got right here. I haven't tried it with this style of paper, but look, oh, this one's a little bit wet from when I dripped it. So let's have another one. I haven't tried, this is my marker paper, but I want to try it out and see how it looks. So you literally just apply it down and 
you left. How cool is that? So all that, um, what do you call it? Um, all that wispiness will go away as soon as you um, tap it with your cloth. So I'm just gonna close this up for just a minute and I'm gonna bring my cloth over. Or you can do this with a paper towel, it doesn't matter. But try not to, um, what do you call it? Don't rub it, okay? So just literally um, apply a little bit of pressure. And the longer you leave it, the more it'll you know bleed into the paper. So you'll get different effects with different papers. So how cool is that? Okay, so that's number one. So that was kind of a fun, different style of paper. Okay, um, let's try it with cardstock and see what effect we get. And I wonder if the water temperature also makes a difference because this was warm water, whereas yesterday I used cold water. So it's something to, uh, really fun for you to play with for sure. So let's go ahead and grab some white cardstock. But let's add a bit more ink. Even though there is ink on here, we could add just a little bit more. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I just love that. Let's add a little bit green on there too. See what it does. Okay, a lot of it sunk to the bottom. That's okay. Let's add a little bit of black for fun. Let's see what happens with the black. It adds a whole new dimension. Okay, and then I just kind of go ahead and all right, just move it around. Create some really fun here. That's a blue there. Okay. And then I'm actually, because I have the 12 by 12, I'm just going to go ahead and add the whole 12 by 12 because I know it can fit in here. And I'm going to lift. Oh my gosh, I love this one. Check that out. That is stunning. So I'm going to go ahead, open that up. And I'm just going to take my cloth and I'm going to just dab it. Don't rub, okay? And the black always tends to create a little bit more muddiness, which is fine. It's pretty that way. Okay. So again, remember, don't rub, just dab. And um, like I said, different papers will kind of create different effects. And uh, you can keep going in and in and in with more paper to pick up what's left over. Isn't that cool? I know, the yellow and black look awesome. And once they dry, they look even better. But um, let's do one more with what we've got. Um, let's see if there's anything left in here. And then we'll move on to the art journal page. It seems like a big waste um, of ink on the bottom. But to be honest, you guys, these things are so full of ink that you use such tiny drops that um, they'll last you for a long time. At least that's what I was told. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and lift and oh my goodness, it's like the second generation is better than the first. You know what I mean? Sorry, there's a little piece of, check these out. Check that out. If that's not cool, I don't know what is. So it's like the first generation, uh, or sorry, the second generation, which is the second time you do it, creates an even cooler effect. And I'm not even sure the camera picks up the vibrancy. It almost on camera looks a little bit more muted than it actually is. Um, but look at that effect. So let's let these, um, let's dry these up. Because I think we should use them as our backgrounds. But before I do that, I'm going to move this out of the way so that um, we're not spilling everywhere, or I'm not spilling everywhere, because you guys know that this would be a bad, bad thing, right? So I'm going to be very, very gentle with this, and there we go. And I just took it over to the sink. feel better now that there's no water all over the place. It's going to make me a bit nervous. So much water in one place. All 
right, so let's go ahead and dry this as I totally almost ruined us. Yes, there is directions in the kit. Yep. Yep. It's available in the store. Yep. So that the purpose of the little uh, paper circles is so that your ink doesn't sink to the bottom. Okay. I just, I just think it's awesome. It's just too much fun. And I will show you what to do with them once you're done um, with these pieces, because you can create some pretty cool stuff, right? Okay, so let's try the other one up as well, so that we can use them all up. Put this one off to the side. They dry really quickly, actually, because you're not really soaking them for very long. Oh, they are so cool. Okay, almost done drawing this one. Move that off to the side and we'll dry this one. I love this one. I don't know why. It's like they mute, it's muted. It's funky. This these are uh, Rangers. I yeah. This is like my third one. It's not that great. Um, it's being finicky as we speak. Actually, it's going like off and on. I don't know if you can hear it, but. Yeah, and you know what, I um, I also, I played with Ava um, creating all these amazing backgrounds, so definitely um, you can totally play with your kids with this, um, and like I said, this kit will last you for so, so, so long, and I know, um, I've seen a video somewhere, I think I did maybe a Google search and I found one, but I can definitely put it on the site for you guys um, to take a look. But there's so many fabulous different ways that you can use this kit. So yeah, definitely take a look. Um, but that's what it's called. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and grab our, our art journal. And what I want to do with this guy is I want to, um, what did I want to do? I wanted to gesso it up. That's what I wanted to do. So let's go ahead and take some gesso. So I'm just going to take a little bit. Ooh, hello. It's getting a bit gunky on me. A bit gunky. And I'm just going to use that same brush that I used earlier, but I'm going to clean it up a bit. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead. And the reason I'm going to gesso it up, I want to make it stronger. I want to I wanna have the paint. I'm actually... You'll see the technique I'm about to do. It's almost a waste to gesso it a little bit, but that's fine. I'm doing it. I'm doing it anyway. It makes it stronger. It's just another layer of strength for this thin paper. Okay. I always gesso my surfaces regardless, because you know what? Sometimes I change my mind about what I'm going to do, so it's always good to anyway. And you know that your paint will definitely um, stay on the top versus kind of sink into the fibers, losing its vibrancy. So definitely just so your surfaces when you can. And this is um, a little bit heavier gesso. Um, it's called heavy white gesso. It's not really heavy. It's just not fluid. Um, right? So there's some of the other stuff can be a little bit more fluid. I just happened to grab this one, but if whatever you've got works, then that's great. You use a lot of gesso. I do too. Yeah, I have to buy it in the tubs for my art. Like big tubs. Big, big, big tubs. Because, you know. 
I know. I we can't we just can't create without it, can we? I have no comment about the seat gun um, and the quality of it. I think it's, well, I'll, I'll tell you, I think it's one of the worst. I feel like I love Ranger and for the most part they make good products, but this craft tool, this is the third one I think, or fourth, that I've had and it's already giving me troubles. So. And I don't abuse them or anything, so I just feel like something's, you know, I don't know what they're doing with these guns, but they've blown up on me, I, you know, anyway. I don't know what's up with this guy. And I don't know if you can hear it goes off and on as I'm drying the page. Yes, I do like Rangers Gesso, I have to agree. But this, um, this Art Basics Heavy Gesso rocks. And as you can see, this gesso does not make the page warp at all. Um, the warpiness came actually from the matte medium at the beginning because these pages are so thin. But you'll get warping with um, anything with thin pages. Not that it's very warpy anyway but anyhow so now that my pages are nice and thick I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to pick the pattern that I want to have on my page and I don't know what you guys think I'm trying to kind of play and see which one I like I like all of them to be honest with you this one's really fun don't you think this one's just stunning I just love it. I almost like this to be on the bottom. So what I'm going to do, oh, and this one too, on both sides. I just think it's so, so lovely. I love, love, love that. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and actually take a piece of black cardstock. Yep, black cardstock. Because I think that'll really pop if we put it on here. But I want to leave the edges a little bit white. So um, what I'm actually going to do um, is I'm going to measure this out. I know, well, not really measure it out because you guys know me, but with my nails, I will measure it out because that's how I roll. And we're going to go ahead and cut this up. I just need my cutter. I have my dad cutter here. My good cutter is still upstairs. I haven't scrapbooked, scrapbooked a page in like a month, I think. It's crazy. Craziness, I tell you, people. And it moved on me. See, this is why it's the bad cutter, but that's okay. I'm not worried too, too much. And then we're going to cut it about right there. And then we'll make the other page exactly the same. So it'll be easy. Easy peasy. Alright, just like that. And then we'll cut one more piece, just the same. I hate measuring, I swear. I really hate it not my forte. I know how to measure, I just hate doing it. You know what I'm saying, you guys? I know you do. I'm going to have to fix that up a bit. Not a problem. We all have scissors. So that's what I'm going to do scissors and just trim those up a bit because it's a bit off. I'm not sure what happened with my measurements there. I think it's my it's my cutter. At least that's what I'm sticking with. Alright, here we go. Here we go. So I'm bringing this back and I'm going to add that in just like so yep and i'm going to use um i have soft gel here i just have that right up oh i have do i have matte gel i do this is just matte gel you can use the same thing i had used earlier but um because it's a heavier then i tend to use a little bit of a heavier 
um, gel. That is the only reason. Okay. Oh, is it dry on me? It's almost dry. It's because it's at the end of it. It's life. That's why. It's the end of its life. Because Emma's not going to live. That happens right at the end. Especially if you, and I travel sometimes with it, I expose it to different temperatures. So that's kind of um, an issue at times as well. It has gone on the bottom of planes where it does get frozen, so it's probably not a fabulous thing. But that's what you get when you travel too, right? Okay, so just move that around. Just like so. All right. And I'm not worried about getting anything on there. And um, I'll go ahead and add the other piece to the other side. Don't try to get it perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just an art journal page, you guys, right? Okay, and I'm going to get a little bit of gesso right there. I know, that's what I said. It's it'll, The gesso just makes it a bit stronger, that's all. I You know what? It's instinctive for me to um, do it with gesso. Um, and to be honest, the pages are kind of um, uh, off-white, and this actually makes them uh, white as well, and it makes it stronger, so that's actually why I used it. Um, it may seem like a waste, but, um, but I know my pages are nice and sturdy that way, so that's why I did it. I know, it may, I, I said that at the beginning, it may seem silly. Um, I'm just holding it down so that the seam is nice and tight on there, and my fingers are dirty already. So I'll close that up. It's almost done. It could probably go in the garbage. And the next thing that I want to do is, again, I want to pick those pieces up, right? This is like the easy art journaling. And I'm just going to make a little snippet as to kind of where I want it to go. About right there. And about right there. And so I'm going to bring my cutter in. Cut that up. Like the background is done for you with marbling and then now it's kind of assembling those pieces and then doing the rest of your art journaling over the top it's really fun it's kind of like that isn't that cool love that oh we can use the let's finish up with that guy so let's use the other one because that one's really dry and it's driving me crazy. So let's just use this fluid one. Okay, I'll take that brush back. Clean it up a bit. Just the assembly of it. Not gorgeous. I just love it so much. Yeah, again, I did not have to gesso, okay? So I the only reason that um I gessoed was to make my pages a little bit stronger and um, it's just habit so I just did it okay so you don't if you're doing it don't you don't necessarily have to okay do what you like to do on your page I'm not sure why my thing's not sticking it doesn't want it's got textured this um this uh, cardstock it does have texture so sometimes it takes a little bit longer to just adhere and then we're gonna do one more Okay, on the other side and let's let's bring in that blue because I really love it I think it's really really pretty um, so about right there I'm thinking 
and so we'll do about that second right there. Looks pretty close, and then about right there. That's my me that's my measuring staff. Do you like it? I kind of like it. Right there and right there. Perfect the mundo. Awesomeness, and I will add some gel medium. I'm a messy crafter, aren't I? Probably drives you guys crazy. That's okay. But it's fun. It's so much fun. Okay, that already I love. <laughs> I do. I just, I just think these marbling pages are so, so nice. Just holding it down. Is it your kind of measuring? Perfect. Glad to hear I'm not the only one that measures this way. I'm so glad. I'm just going to add a bit more. Again, this page is a bit um, textured, this cardstock, so sometimes it just takes a little bit longer to adhere that, so just patience, my children, patience. So now we've got the most awesome backgrounds to play with, so let's pull out we can pull out some uh, fun stencils and we can pull out some awesome um, stamps, which we will do in just a moment. Okay, so just like that. And then I'm going to take, this is, um, I like this one. I use it a lot. It's one of those Dino Weekly ones. Um, what is it called? I can't even remember what it's called. But anyway, I think it'll be um, really fun. So let's do... Um, do I have any black sitting here? Have I got, do I have a black flat fabio? No, that's purple. No, we could do purple. Is there any purple on here? Not really. I think black would be better. So let's use um, black acrylic paint. Okay. So let's grab black acrylic paint. And I do have a palette somewhere underneath my Gigantor mess. Look at this. Okay. Pot. This has pretty much nothing left in it. Oh, come on. Okay, that can hurt. And we'll take a little sponge. And this is somewhat heavy body, heavier body. I wouldn't call it really heavy body, but. And then we're just gonna. All over the page, not all over the page, sorry. Just a little bit here and there. Okay. Some places softer than others. And just like that. Okay. Gorgeous, right? It gives a little something. And then on this page, if we wanted, we can make it a little bit more, uh, a little bit darker. But it's really your personal preference on what you want to do to your page. Okay. Love that. So we're starting a little background, right? Put that off to the side for a moment. We'll give this a quick dry so that we can put our next layer on there. Any questions so far? Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I know, it's a great stencil. See, can you hear the gun doing its crazy thing? Ugh, it's weird. It scares me. Okay, so there's that. Now we can go ahead and take some fun little stamps, which I've got right here, or I've got, oh, you know what I was going to show you? Okay, we have the brand new stencil. 
I love this one. Actually, I really want to use it. I think it'll look really pretty on there. Just got this in the store. Love this new Donna Downey stencil. So yummy. So, so yummy. Will it fit? Do you think it'll fit on here? Or are we going to have to use it on a different page? I guess we don't have to use all of it, right? We can just use a portion of it, and that'll look really pretty as well. Let's do that. Let's do it. So let's grab a different color. Let's do like um, a magenta color. So let's see here. I have got oh, one of my favorite colors. It's a bit of an expensive paint to use on here, but that's okay. Quinacridone magenta. But my acrylics sitting over there, so I thought I'd use it. I'm not using too much. It's, I don't usually use this kind on my art journal. It's, Canvases, but that's okay. Highly, highly pigmented gorgeousness. This is Quinacridone Magenta, and I don't really want to get it over here, so I'm kind of going to stick to just to the edges right there. Some places darker than others. really pretty and then what I like to do is maybe do um, a green color for the stem so let's grab cadmium green light not that you need to know the names but in case somebody wants to know that's what I'm taking and I'm just gonna grab another sponge I buy these at the dollar store by the way um, and I use them Gorgeous green, isn't it? Oh, that's a little bit right there. Gorgeous, look at that. Isn't that pretty? So now what we can do is let's dry it up and give it a little bit more of an outline. We could actually certainly paint it as well, which would be really fun. So why don't we do one more just for kicks since we have that paint now. Maybe we'll turn it off to the side so we can get a little bit more of it. So let's do the stem first since I have the green guy right there. And then I'll grab this guy. Sorry, I'm trying to keep up with the chat here as well as I'm doing this. Probably not a good idea because I can't really see what's going on. So I'll just stick to myself. All right, just like that. Okay, gorgeousness, gorgeousness. Love that. I'm going to dry it up. And then I'm going to take a little bit of titanium white, which is just a white acrylic paint, and I'm going to mix it up a little bit with the magenta that I had mixed up, um, that I had just pulled out. And I'm going to take one of these brushes. It's easy. Oh, let's grab the titanium white, which I forgot to grab. Just a little bit. The white will really lighten it up. I just kind of a little bit and just go right in there okay and we're going to almost make it like dual tone right when you're painting call it the dual tone painting this is you know art journaling is kind of like a place where you get to find out um, what techniques work for you and what techniques don't um, and so you know one of the things I love to do is I love to just kind of practice um, and so have it be your place of, of freedom. I think sometimes we get a little bit too concerned about our art journals being perfect. It's not really the place. 
it's just not, well, it's really no such thing anyway, but I think we get a little bit too caught up. Um, so have it be the place where you practice. Um, otherwise, it's it can be extremely frustrating um, when you create, right? So I don't want it to be that for me today. What it does, it covers up a little bit of that black, which I kind of like. Yet still keeping some of those dark um, edges. And I will go in anyway with a black, but I really love the way that looks, the dual tone. All right. And so I'm going to do this exact same thing right here. Love the brush strokes because that's what gives it that dual tone. Okay, so make sure you keep those in there. It is, isn't it? Just adding a bit of the white, and all that does is it just creates a little bit of that variance. A little bit more, that's all. Just adding it right over the top. And I do tend to use um, heavy bodies a bit more than soft bodies lately. It's kind of been more of a kick that I've been on. Um, but I think as an artist, I, I really change my ways. But look at how that white just changes it a little bit. And then you can go in a little bit with your darks too and create another little stroke here and there. Just to add a bit more dimension, right? What do you guys think? Pretty cool, huh? Pretty, pretty cool. And um, I could take a bit of my black. Um, let's clean this up. I usually like to go with a Stamper's Big Brush pen, but you know what, we do have a bit of black right here. This is where you kind of have to be careful. I'm not sure, I don't want to ruin it. Not quite the right brush, but could go in and outline this a little bit. Like I said, this isn't quite the right brush, but I was too lazy to grab another one. I thought you have to be very perfect with it. That's, I could be imperfect, there we go. Imperfect made me feel better, see? Actually gives it a bit more texture. That looks so much better with the black. It just kind of makes it pop, doesn't it? Okay. All right, like that. Should we do a little bit of black edges around these? Maybe just a bit, and I think that'll also help just a tiny, tiny bit. Oops, not quite enough on my brush. I'm not using the right brush I'm trying not to load it too hot too much or it's going to kind of get everywhere right now it just really pops I love that and you can still see the magenta popping through on the edges stenciling you know is um, a really easy way to um, to have an image on your page when you can't draw, right? So not everybody can draw. So stenciling is certainly 
beautiful way to be able to get that look, right? How's that? Pretty cool. You know what? I'm not using an angled brush. I probably should have been, but I'm not. So, all right, you can, you know, you can use anything. I should probably close my white. I'll leave it sitting there. So I'm just going to dry this up so I don't smudge it again. Not so smudgy, smudgy. Then what I'm going to do, I'll show you in just a second. I'm going to see if this art will fit in there. This is one of the new stencils as well. I have these in the shop. Love this stencil. I think this is the third time ordering this stencil for the shop. It's called because it went the first two times so quick. It's called Viva, Viva La Art. See if it fits. I think it does. Oh yeah, it'll fit. Should we do it in teal? Let's do it in teal, people. Right? You guys agree? Good, good, good. Um, we've got some golden teal right here, so we'll just use a little bit of that. Just a little bit, not too much. I can't believe I'm using my these prints to art journal, but that's okay. That's all right. And then we'll outline them with a little bit of black. Does that sound? Does that sound good? Love, 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 love. Oh my gosh, it does look like a mountain. Oh my gosh, see, this marbling kit is amazing. I'm telling you, you can create the coolest backgrounds. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I put that brush in the water. That's okay. I'm going to clean it up use it again. It was fine. It wasn't the best, but it was fine. It worked. And I'm just going to outline the art a little bit so that it pops a little bit more than what it does now without losing its real grunge. Because I don't know if you can tell, but the letters have a real grunge to them. They're not very perfect. Um, so I don't want to lose that imperfection. I'm being fairly careful to kind of keep those fabulous ridges on them. Okay. But the black certainly makes a huge difference. All right. And the next page we'll do is we'll play a little bit with some alcohol inks, creating some fun little backgrounds. How's that sound? Some fun explosive backgrounds. Crazy there, but that's all right. All right, there we go. How's that? Pretty good. Like that page.
Yep. Don, that's just the way it goes right now with Ustream. Just have to put up with it, unfortunately. Mine is actually working fine um, as well, so I don't know. Um, they fixed it for the most part, but I know some people are still having issues with it. Anyway, let's move on to another page. I'm going to go ahead and um, for this page, I am going to add some gesso because we are going to um, put some inks on there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my white gesso again. And I wonder if I want texture. No, I probably don't. So I'm just going to go ahead and add, grab the same brush I used. Just clean it off a little bit because it's a little bit wet. And I'm not going to um, glue these pages together. I'm just going to leave them as is. Just decided. Just more because of uh, time than anything. Just so right on this page. I am um, looking into a different um, streaming. So um, I'll be able to let you know in a couple weeks if we're switching over, but definitely been looking um, at some new ways and actually we'll stream right from the website which is really cool um so that's kind of what um, i've been working on which will be so easy for everybody to get on um so we're kind of hoping that will happen for us very very soon here and um just in a couple of announcements as i just saw my page um i will be teaching um this month i've got a very big teaching schedule and one of them is um, on November 2nd I've got my Art of Abstract in Edmonton, Alberta at the Urban Scrapbooks. Um, I have got um, I've got uh, Vancouver or I should say Burnaby BC in uh, British Columbia and um, that is at Clipper Street teaching three different mixed media classes so be sure to check that out as well as Busy Bees in Toronto. So, and again, mixed media um, classes. So definitely check those out if you're in those areas. Some of them have been sold out, some of them not yet. Yeah, and uh, Yvonne just put um, the calendar, calendar to my upcoming classes. So if you do want to know where to sign up and all that kind of stuff, that's where you sign up. The only one that's missing on there, just because our calendar was glitchy, um, is the Urban Scrapbooks in Edmonton. But if you just send me a quick email, I will send you all the details if you need them. Okay, Just send a, an email through the website, and we will help you out with that. Sorry that the camera is going in and out. That's really annoying. I know that. And I'm sorry for that. Uh, do you like the Moleskin sketch to use? Yep, I do. Really, I'm. I just love journals. I will try anything, to be honest with you. But I want to show you how thin these pages actually are. So I don't usually use them for a wet media, but do you see how thin they are? So um, that's why I usually do uh, two pages together. I'm not doing that right now, but just something to note, right? And I know with um, Moleskine journals, um, most people too will put a um, 
that using it for wet media, they put a piece of masking tape, I, you know, for the seam. I don't. Um, I haven't had issues, um, but some people have, so that's just um, a thing. So is it my favorite wet medium? No, but I definitely use it. Um, I definitely use it for sketching. Okay, so it is, you know, it's my favorite sketching book. So I'll probably continue uh, using it for sketching. Okay. Um, but that wasn't really the purpose of the show anyway, right? I just, I knew people were going to ask about the journal and why I'm using it. And that's, that was my reasoning. So the reason is no reason. So let's pull out our alcohol inks. And I've got a nice big drawer of them. And um, I don't know, I've been kind of um, on a kick with them lately. No idea why just have been um and same with you know my amazing acrylic inks i just love them so much um i think they can create some pretty cool effects so that's i'm just gonna grab a few just for fun just some of these just for fun because i think it'll be cool i left some of my good ones upstairs because i was actually playing believe it or not upstairs all right let's kind of use them together and then maybe the white Let's use this color. So we need an orange, so let's use it from another brand. Oh, this is India ink. It's a little bit India ink. This should be fun. Okay, and we're just going to create really fun little backgrounds. And I was going to grab, if I have it here, did I put it away? I might not. Let's see, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Okay, so I'm going to pull out my dust destroyer. Are you ready? And I'm going to put just a tiny, tiny bit of water on here. If I have a water mister, which I had somewhere over here in a second ago. And I moved it. Did I move it? I did. So let me fill another one up, which is not a big deal. Give me two seconds. Perfect. It's probably buried in all my stuff. And um, do you need to put water? Absolutely not. That's just the technique I'm using. There we go. Just a little bit of water. And I'm going to go ahead and add my inks. And I don't want to add a ton. Just a little bit. But look what happens when you put it in water. Okay. And then I just take this guy and spray and by the way, it dries instantly, right? So really fun. So before it actually dries fully, fully, we'll add maybe a little bit of this stuff. I have a white shirt, just an FYI. I do, I do. And I'm blasting it off the page and what's cool is that the um this guy kind of creates this whiteness and it must be whatever solution is in here isn't that cool love that and you can see how you create that purple I'm just going to give this a quick heat set and then we'll do the other side. See how cool that is? Love that. It is better blow than blowing with a straw, for sure. You don't get dizzy, right? And so for this side, I actually want to do it maybe a little bit less. So big on here, but then more white space here. And so just a tiny bit less. So maybe I pulled out way too many. Probably don't want to have time to use all those colors, but that's okay. Oh, 
you know what I forgot just a tiny bit of water again just makes those inks really flow concentrate them a bit in one area okay, and then take that right away more up here. I'm actually going to dry it up too, just a tiny bit before I add the pink. And then we'll add the Quinacridone Magenta. Beautiful. And you can really manipulate this We'll turn it so that some of it goes on top. Seriously, this is just way too much fun. I think some of it just ended up on my computer, but that's okay. How cool is that, you guys? We need a little bit of tail right there. Just needs a little. Oops, I just pulled that off. It's not quite dry all the way. Oh, beautiful. Gorgeousness. We'll do a little bit right there. And then some of it going this way. This is really cold right now. Woo. How cool. Whoops. Let's dry all this up. All right, beautiful, beautiful. So that's pretty dry, oh, a little bit wet. Let's dry that up. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna take some fun little stamps. Now, I do have, um, I do have my favorite ones, which are my birdies. I love them so, so much, and they're simple, um, yet super pretty. But I have this new stamp set in the store as well that I absolutely love. Um, I haven't played around with it yet. I'm not sure if it quite fits this particular scene, so we'll leave that one. Um, but we'll throw the birdies. They're so cute. I just love them just love them and you know you can use them really simply it doesn't have to be maybe we'll put one just on the side here I'm trying to think with a little saying up here and again, this can be a super simple page right it doesn't have to be crazy again I just used my Stamper's Big Brush pen so that's my favorite India ink so it's nice and dark Gorgeous little birdie, isn't he? And then we'll add a little bit. Saying right there, just like that. So super simple page. We could put another little birdie up here. Let's do that for fun. Because we can. It's one of my favorite stamps for sure. We'll almost put in like. How does he sit? He sits kind of like. I don't even know. But anyway, we'll have him sit some way. I think he's kind of more like this. I don't really know. Flying through the air, I don't really. Who cares? Just 
just like that. Oh, I missed. That's okay. He looks cute still. Ta-da, right? Super, super, super simple page. Nothing crazy, but you learned a little technique on the background. Um, really, really fun and easy to do, really. Um, you could color in the bird for sure. So you could actually take some of your, um, you know, if I have, I did use teal and magenta on here. So I could actually take a little bit, this has black, so let me clean that off in the water. But what you could do, if you wanted to, what's really cool is you could take even this ink right here, if you wanted to color the birdies up and stuff, put it on your palette. It is fluid, so just watch that it doesn't go everywhere. And because it's fluid, it'll be a little bit more transparent. Um, and you could just totally color them in, right? And just why I didn't dry that out, by the way, so that's probably why. And then there's a little bit of teal, which you could put on top. Okay, and same with this guy. Just you can paint them up. Be a little bit rough about it. It's not perfect. Look how cute they are. Oh, yeah, I love that. I love that. I love the messiness. It's just, it's just how I roll. Love, love this messiness. Gorgeous. Love them. Too bad he's missing his beak. I can put him in later. Was that fun? Perfect. So that's it for tonight. Um, like I said, definitely check out, um, check that out. Um, for those of you that missed it, some of you had asked for me to show it. So I will show it again. Um, mixed, the mixed media club, um, is, amazing it's you guys are just like who the for those of you that are in it you guys are just absolutely fantastic um this last month we had a crazy i kind of went a little bit crazy and gave you kind of like a four step video um we went into kind of the fine arts a little bit you guys have been doing beyond amazing um our numbers are really growing which is really fabulous um i have a golden uh prize pack to give away once we reach um a certain number of members so i'm really excited so there's uh, golden mediums, golden paint, um, et cetera. Um, for all, um, and the people that are eligible are obviously the ones that are in the club. So um, this is the one that we did this month. Um, crazy, crazy texture. Um, lots of fun. So I taught you how to uh, create with mediums and paints and blending and so on and so forth. So um, that's what we created. Um, and the results are amazing. I will do a YouTube video to showcase some of the amazing work these ladies have been doing this month. Um, if you're interested, it's $10 a month. Um, and that is all on my website again. All right. So thank you so, so much for stopping by. And um, I will go ahead and stop the recording and I'll stick around to answer some more questions.